What if I told you that the world's largest passenger aircraft, once declared dead by its own manufacturer, might fly again, not in a museum, not in a farewell tour, but as the centerpiece of one airline's future fleet strategy? This is not just about an aeroplane. It's about risk, vision, and defying the gravity of industry trends. Welcome to the story of Emirates, and its mission to bring the Airbus A380 back to life. In 2021, Airbus delivered the final Airbus A380. It was supposed to mark the end of the super jumbo era, the conclusion of one of the boldest chapters in aviation history. The A380 was an engineering marvel, a double-decker jet with space for over 850 passengers, designed to connect the world's busiest hubs in unmatched comfort. But the timing couldn't have been worse. Airlines were moving towards smaller, more efficient aircraft. Twin-engine wide bodies offered better economics and greater flexibility. The A380, while beloved by passengers, no longer made financial sense for most carriers, and so one by one they retired it. But not Emirates. While others walked away, Emirates leaned in. Today, the Dubai-based airline operates more than 100 A380s, more than the rest of the world combined. For Emirates, the aircraft isn't just a machine. It's a statement, a symbol of comfort, scale, and luxury. At the heart of this belief is Sir Tim Clark, president of Emirates and lifelong advocate for the A380. And he has a bold proposal, not to preserve the aircraft, but to reinvent it. Enter the A380neo, a next generation version of the Super Jumbo. Clark's vision includes a redesigned tail fin to reduce drag, more aerodynamic wings and widespread use of composite materials to cut weight. This isn't a simple refresh, it's a full reimagination. Airbus estimates the development would cost $20 billion. Clark's answer? If you build them, we'll buy them. A bold move, but is it one grounded in reality? To answer that, we need to look back. The original A380 had four major problems. First, it was extremely heavy. Second, it burned far too much fuel through its four massive engines. Third, its enormous wingspan limited which airports could accommodate it. And fourth, it entered a market already shifting to smaller, more efficient jets. These weren't small issues, they were structural, economic and strategic, and they ultimately grounded the program. but the world has changed. When the A380 was designed, composites were new to aviation. Today, aircraft like the A350 and 787 use them for over half of their structures. They're lighter, stronger, and more resistant to wear. Clark believes a re-engineered A380 using these materials could be 25% cheaper to operate he envisions a smaller vertical stabilizer, advanced wings, and even folding wingtips for airport compatibility, all made possible by modern design tools and materials.
But perhaps the most crucial piece of this puzzle is the engine. The original A380 used 1990s engines, powerful but inefficient by today's standards. The A380neo would need something radically better. Enter the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan, a geared turbofan engine with cutting-edge technology, composite blades, ceramic matrix materials, variable pitch fans. It even supports 100% sustainable aviation fuel. In tests, the Ultrafan surpassed 87,000 pounds of thrust and could reduce fuel burn by up to 25%. If paired with the A380neo, it could transform the aircraft's economics and environmental footprint. But there's another reason Emirates isn't giving up on the A380. The passengers. Travelers love it, and for good reason. No other aircraft offers this much space. First-class suites with sliding doors, an onboard bar, showers at 40,000 feet, wide, quiet cabins that feel more like a lounge than a tube. And in the post-pandemic world, comfort and space aren't luxuries. They're selling points. People are willing to pay more for a better flying experience, and Emirates knows how to deliver it. In fact, the A380 has become a brand within a brand. Of course, reviving the A380 comes with risk. A $20 billion price tag, a changing market, rising environmental expectations, but it also comes with opportunity. A world where long-haul demand is growing again, where airport slots are limited, and where premium experiences can command premium prices. Emirates is placing its bet. Now the question is, Will Airbus take the gamble? Sometimes, one vision is enough to challenge an entire industry. And sometimes, the story of a plane doesn't end with its final flight. It just begins a new chapter.